This project originated with an idea by Carmel Doherty and brought together several different sculptors, assistants and government bodies to produce Innes Sculpture Trail. It consists of 10 pieces placed around Innes, County Clare. The stipulation was that they wanted uh, a seat of some description incorporated into the sculpture. So I designed my piece to have three forms at each corner. Well, they always wanted to do a triangular block, you know, type, you know? Yeah. Basically, these was to do a uh, seating as part of it, you see, it has a seat. So it has a seat in it? Well, there's three. You see, the idea was a tree seat, you know, the wall behind here, you know, coming down, and yeah. blocked. Yeah. So eventually we decided we'd just go right through the light, you know, that's very nice. Yeah, it's tricky enough to do, but, uh, but the idea then was the trinity, the three in one job, you know. Start off with your maquette, but, you know, the material really dictates an awful lot of what you're doing eventually, you know, like. So heck, we're just like, we were limited from a way of point of view of the uh, material too, you know, we had to kind of, without going too deep into them, you know, use the space we had. Yeah. And, uh, we tend to just attack the head in a free kind of yeah. primitive way again, nice. you know, rather than going for yeah. detail. There's kind of an animal element in the yeah. you know, yeah. human uh, animal. It's like the to Look at the on the arms, rather than, I had these linking up at one stage and the maquette again, but I decided just to go for the, <coughs> the two arms as one, you know, rather than the two with one under the other, you know. The get over was a, uh, an interaction between uh, the animal and man and the human the human form, in other words, nature versus <coughs> the human element. The height was another kind of a problem because we had to Marcel and myself had to judge the distance, say for the size of the legs coming down at the bottom, and yet not having it too short. If I had brought them up too high it would have been too squat. The other area that uh, we talked about quite a while was the arms. So originally we had the arms one going in under the other, kind of a link up situation. And uh, changing around the maquette over a period we decided to just do the arch and simplify the whole thing rather than have it too, too intricate. Kind of little things came up that we worked together on and tried to unify the whole design as one piece. Big hand. little paddles then at the end I decided just to bring in three simple circles just to again link up with the three sided structure itself. All in all I think it blends together 
reasonably. And hopefully people will start sitting on it soon. I'm getting worried about that. <laughs> I suppose in time they'll, they'll uh, start using it as a seat. after to commemorate uh, Clear winning the 1995 All-Ireland Hurling Final and uh, was made in 1997 by the two wise. Okay. Um, as you can see the texture is kind of like a bush hammer texture effect going up to the head and in the head is a uh, old kind of figure style head. All right. um, as you can see from this head it works all the way down, there's a big long crack all the way down, it shows how much uh, work is involved in uh, putting the structure up and uh, you can see there there's steel erected panels gone down to hold the piece in place Just looking at my, my four mines I did last year uh, I reflect on the importance of the, uh, the light on a sculpture from the point of view that, say for example, early morning light or late evening light gives a very warm element to a, any sculpture, rather than the midday light which just tends to leave it a bit cold and blank, again, especially if it's limestone, whereas if you're using granite now, it would be a warmer, a warmer uh, type of stone for different lights. And also the space around the sculpture is uh, very important from that point of view to give it uh, different angles of vision and a feeling of maybe being part of it rather than being confronted with a sculpture up close suddenly around the corner. people have kept rubbing their hands on it and see how polished it is from people just rubbing it. It incorporates two pieces and it's the second part of the series of sculpture trails in this. And this sculpture trail is, involves um, seating. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different textures involved in this piece. There's, as you see up here, we've got a uh, bush hammer and we've got a claw here to be used in these pieces. This is done with a straight bush. We've got bush hammer here used in this part and we go down to claw here and then finally down in the feet themselves they've been polished. The shop owners around this area, what do you think of the sculpture here? I think shop? it's a great addition to the area because I think it's something that people come to look and admire. Yeah. And the only thing is at night I find the jumping her. <laughs> and I'm afraid they might wreck her. Uh, Come to sit in it now oh, and you do. look outside so, your shop and see if the weather, But the weather has been very bad. When the weather's good, a lot yeah. of people come here. They actually take sandwiches out of my shop and sit in. It happens a lot. 
Actually, a lot of people don't know what, quite what she is, which makes it interesting too. Mm -hmm. uh, people can uh, sort of get their own impressions of what she is, actually. Mm -hmm. And I find that it's a talking point for a lot of people around the area. And I think it helps to brighten up the area. I like the Scots, I think they're very nice. They draw people, especially the tourists. They're a nice focal point for tourists. And they're very attractive, and the stone is very natural looking. So and how would you think the benefit the town, the people of the town? I think that um, they make the town more attractive for the people who live here, but particularly for the tourists as well. Yeah. They're not, you know, the feature mm -hmm. to draw people. Okay. I think they're beautiful because the only place in Dublin that has them is O'Connell Street. Just the one street, and they're all over Ennis, so you can walk around Ennis looking at everything, anywhere you like. Sculpture here behind you. Uh, it's an amazing piece of sculpture because I feel you know, uh, there's been a lot of work gone into it. Because I, I've seen it at first time myself because I, I, I was a patient in the hospital where, where it was made. <laughs> so really, in that sense, you know, it's, it's, for me, really, I, I've seen the roots of it. Yeah. How do you think it benefits the town? People love uh, the town. It's amazing. It's, it's really, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's awesome. What's your opinion on this piece of sculpture? It's not too bad. It's nice enough, but uh, I don't really like want for artists of the town, but uh, I don't think anyone really does it. sculptures I think they too modern for people like myself to appreciate. Yeah. I don't even know if there's a history attached to a lot of the sculptures in the town itself. I think if the money was more used for improving the pavements, I think people would appreciate it much more. Do you think statues resemble anyone in the town? Well if you look at his face there now and take a look at this statue. <laughs> resemblance there. In all honesty now look at